Hello everyone, this is Grade 6, Module 3, Lesson 1, Problem Set. So we're going to take a look at a few different questions on here. I'm going to start with question 1. And it states, draw a number line and create a scale for the number line in order to plot the points negative 2, 4, and 6. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to create a scale for this one. So I'm going to actually draw my number line on here. And I'm going to mark off 0 right in the center. And then I see that I have negative 2, 4, and 6. I know that they are uh, can be multiples of 2. So I'm going to go by 2's for my scale. And I'll label them down below. And then I'm going to go to the left of 0 and put in my negatives. And notice as I'm moving further to the left, the numbers are getting bigger, 2, 4, 6, but actually the values are getting smaller because they're negatives. So A says, graph each point and its opposite on the number line. I'm going to graph these points in blue uh, for the original numbers. So I see I have a negative 2, so I'm going to come here and mark it as a negative 2. I have 4, so I'm going to go over to positive 4. And I have a positive 6. Now, I need to uh, graph their opposites. And for this, um, I'll use a different color. I'll use green. Uh, if I start right here at this first one, this negative 2, I see that because of my scale, it's one jump to the left of 0. And the opposite means it's going to be the same place away just on the opposite side of zero. So instead of doing one jump to the left, I'm going to do my one jump to the right, which is actually at positive two. So if I take a look at my next one, I have four. On this scale, it's one, two jumps to the right. So the opposite is going to be the same distance away on the opposite side or on the other side of zero. So instead of jumping two to the right, I'm going to jump two to the left. And I see that my opposite of four is negative four. And then my last one is six, and I'm going to do my jumps again. And I have one, two, three, which means the opposite of three jumps to the right for my six is three jumps to the left. One, two, so I see that my opposite of 6 is negative 6. And I kind of explained how I did that, how I found the opposite of each point for B here as I went through this. Um, the way to find an opposite of each point is it's the same distance away from 0, just on the opposite side. And you see when we have 0 right here, it almost splits it into two different spots. You have your positives here and your negatives here. So if I'm jumping two jumps to the right to get to my four, two jumps to the left will get the opposite because of the same distance from zero. So let's uh, move down and we're going to take a look. Now we'll take a look at question two uh, just below. Carlos uses a vertical number line to graph the points negative 4, negative 2, 3, and 4. He notices that negative 4 is closer to 0 than negative 2. He is not sure about his diagram. What do you know about the vertical number line to determine if Carlos made a mistake or not? Support your explanation with a number line. So I'm going to try my best to draw my number line here. I'm going to end up going into another question, but I still want to try to do it. Um, so I'm going to put down the, the statements that we have here. Uh, he notices that negative 4 is closer to 0. So if I plot 0 on here, um, and I start counting up, 1, 2, 3... Four, I can take a look down below and I know that if 1 is 1 jump away from 0, I know that negative 1 is 1 jump away from 0 the other direction. So 1 is above, negative 1 is 1 jump below. 
So negative 2 is going to be 2 away. Negative 3 is going to be 3 away. And negative 4 is going to be 4 away. And we see that they do line up. If I have uh, 1 jump to 1, positive 1 going up, I have 1 jump to negative 1 going down. So up here in our statement, he notices that negative 4 is closer to 0 than negative 2. He's not sure about this diagram. Uh, what I know about a vertical number line, it's the same as the horizontal number line. Um, so uh, he did make a mistake in this one because if we look on our number line down below, we see that negative 4 is right here, and negative 2 is right here, and 0 is right there. So negative 2 is actually closer to 0 on the number line. Even though it's a smaller number, 2 compared to 4, it has a higher value because it's, because it's further up on the number line than the negative 4. So the last question that we're going to take a look at, we're going to slide down and take a look at uh, 5. And I'm going to do this kind of out loud, and I'll show you a quick example to help out with this. Will the opposite of a positive number always sometimes or never be a positive number. So when we take a look at this one, let's try an example for it. If I have a positive 5, the opposite of a positive 5 is a negative 5 because 5 is 5 jumps away from 0 to the right on a number line. Negative 5 is going to be the same number of places away, just on the opposite side. So it's 5 jumps to the left. So let's try two more of these with positive numbers. If I have 156, uh, positive 156, that's 156 jumps to the right of 0. I know that 156 jumps to the left of 0 is negative. And then I'll try one more. Let's do 2. That's a positive 2. And this one I'll put on a number line down below here just to show. There's my positive 2. Now the opposite, if this is 2 jumps away, this one is 2 jumps away in the opposite direction, so a negative 2. I could have shown that with my uh, 5 and my negative 5, and also if I wanted to with my 156 and my negative 156. But all we're trying to look for is the opposite of a positive number, um, will never be a positive number. And the one question that we have is, what about zero? Zero is neither positive uh, nor negative. So that takes away that number as well. Um, I hope this helps, and good luck with the rest of your problem set.